morning. Uh, thank you for joining us uh, this fine morning um, where advocates and legislators are excited to, to laud the efforts um, to move workers in New Jersey a little bit closer to economic security, economic stability. <laughs> by raising our, or making a move to raise our minimum wage to a more family sustaining wage in New Jersey. I think most you could see by some of the, the placards that we have that for a low wage worker, for a minimum wage worker, making just over $17,000 a year, and that's if you're working um, 40 hours a week, 52 weeks a year, it's just unsustainable, untenable in our state, in such a high cost state. So to kick us off, I am glad to bring uh, speaker Vincent Prieto, who um, is leading this effort. Thank you, speaker. Thank you. Thank you and good morning to everybody. As two weeks ago, everybody knows, I launched an uh, anti-poverty you know, initiative for the assembly to start tackling because there's so many people in poverty in the state of New Jersey. And this initiative is an integral part of that. First and foremost, we have to make sure that workers earn a fair wage for their hard work. As uh, a couple of years ago, we set a minimum wage on a constitutional amendment, we set a floor, not a ceiling. We need to do better, and we need to have a, a livable wage for these people to be able to make ends meet in the state of New Jersey. As more people falling into poverty, we need to lift them up and rebuild our middle class. And this is one of the ways we could do that, by giving them a fair livable wage. If you can think about $340 a week roughly is what these individuals make, that's not a livable wage in the state of New Jersey. And when you have people that work hard every day for their employers to make a profit, we want to make sure that they're properly compensated. And I think this is something that we're seeing going on all over the country. Uh, six cities and counties have also started in the last 18 months this initiative that includes Seattle, San Francisco, Los Angeles, and um, New York City and Washington DC will soon follow suit. I think we need to, to get on this and we need to follow suit with them and do the right thing as we can give them something that as a livable wage they can put a roof over their heads, put clothing and food on their table, and again, it's just the right thing to do, and I think this is the right time as we see so many people in the state of New Jersey, not just below the uh, federal poverty line, which is over a million, but when you factor in a livable wage in this expensive state, we need to help these workers that work hard day in and day out. So for me, it's with great pleasure to be part of this and helping all these workers that you see here that really put their blood, sweat, and tears into their jobs, they should be compensated. Thank you. Thank you. So now we bring forward uh, Assemblyman um, Wisniewski, who is also leading this effort. Thank you. Thank you. First, let me thank the speaker for the initiative in combating poverty in New Jersey with the four committee hearings that he had us conduct earlier this month. It was really an important opportunity to hear firsthand the problems that the working poor in New Jersey face and very simple things that many of us take for granted, like getting to and from work. Very difficult if you don't have a car, a big impediment to folks trying to get ahead in New Jersey. But one of the other big impediments is our current minimum wage. Yes, we did raise it. However, when you think about the current minimum wage producing about $17,000 a year, in New Jersey housing costs for an apartment, you could pay anywhere from $800 to $1,100 a month for an apartment. You take that rent out, you're trying to feed a family, or even yourself, on $5,000 a year. You just can't make ends meet under the current minimum wage. This is why a $15 an hour minimum wage is a livable wage, a wage that will help families sustain themselves, uh, will help get them uh, to an area of self-sufficiency. And there are lots of people who have raised a question about what will the minimum wage have as an impact on our economy. The reality is, is that New Jersey's economy and America's economy is based on consumers. 
and by making our working poor better consumers, by giving them the ability to buy their groceries, to buy their pharmaceuticals, to buy the clothes they need for their children, to pay their rent, they are going to help the economy. And most importantly, when Folks can't earn enough money through their current minimum wage. Government steps in in a variety of programs to pick up the slack. And so we are making government more efficient by doing this. It's not fair when employers don't want to pay a livable wage that government has to step in and bail them out. Uh, this minimum wage is an effort that I'm proud to work on with the Speaker, with Assemblyman Chair, and our colleagues in the Senate. And it's a fight worth having, and it's a fight worth winning. Thank you. Glad to call up Assemblyman Gary Scher, who often reminds advocates and often reminds individuals that he represents one a, a, a city, a municipality that has one of the lowest minima or average wages or average incomes in the state of New Jersey. Good morning. Uh, first and foremost, let me thank the speaker for allowing me to be here today, as well as Chairman Wisniewski. Um, as the chairman said, the speaker has uh, initiated an unprecedented review of where we are as a state in terms of poverty level and how those poverty levels translate in a real term to the families and the people of this great state. Mr. Speaker, thank you on behalf of the entire caucus and I know the Democratic Party as well as the people of New Jersey. We're all painfully aware that $8.38 as a minimum wage simply does not make it. By earning the 838, it puts you automatically at a poverty level of 72% versus what the federal government determines is necessary with which to live. Chairman Wisniewski spoke about apartments. We are amongst the highest in the nation in terms of apartment rentals. In addition, we are the fifth most expensive state in which to live. What are the ramifications of raising the minimum wage? First and foremost for those of us involved with education, as all of us are to one extent or another, is the fact that parents need to work, have not only one job, but usually two jobs, perhaps even three, with which to make enough to survive. By having those two jobs or even three jobs, it means less time with their children, less time doing homework, the ramifications are clear and obvious. The children will not do as well as children living in more economically advantaged areas. The city of Passaic, which I have the privilege not only to represent but to live in, um, is, according to the U.S. Census, the fifth poorest city in America for a city of its size. Currently, the income level is around $24,000 to $26,000 per average. This is not sustainable for them at all. It's not sustainable for the people of New Jersey. Particularly affected, we know, by low wages are men and women of color, um, which affects this entire state as well. Currently, one-third of the population of the state is making more than $15 an hour or more. Two-thirds of the workforce, two-thirds of the four and a half million people who work in the state are making less. And 500,000, 11 percent of the population, are making minimum wage salaries at this point in time. Someone just said it's crazy. Indeed it, indeed it is crazy indeed in a state that is amongst the top five in terms of income. It is a disconnect that none of us can understand why there should be so many people living in poverty today. And the question is what is the action that the state will take? The speaker's initiative in this regard is historic, it is unprecedented, and it again focuses New Jersey and those of us involved in policy making into the true priorities that we need to tackle in the upcoming session. And Mr. Speaker, again, we all thank you so much for your initiative, sir. Okay, so the man who needs no introduction, in fact, the senator um, that represents a district in which I grew up in Elizabeth, where my parents did make minimum wage and where the experience of having, watching my mom work two jobs and not have the benefit of her there when I got home from school or sometimes on the weekend because that's what she had to do to make ends meet. Um, I'm, I'm glad to, to introduce Senator Ray Lesniak. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. 
I want to thank uh, Speaker Prieto, uh, Assemblyman Sher, Wisniewski for taking this uh, uh, bold initiative. I am proud to be the Senate sponsorship of $15 minimum wage for state of New Jersey. Okay? So, in 1986, the unemployment uh, rate in the United States was at a historical low level. I think it was 3.6%. It was low. The equivalent minimum wage at that time, okay, uh, uh, Added, uh, added, put inflation on top of that and productivity on top of that is $15 an hour. Okay, so we can have low unemployment, high employment, low unemployment, and $15 an hour minimum wage. And guess what? These jobs aren't going anywhere, okay? They're retail jobs, they're custodial uh, jobs, uh, they're gardening jar, uh, uh, jobs, uh, uh, they're fast food jobs, they're hard working jobs by people who work hard and they deserve a minimum wage, they're not going anywhere. In Australia, the minimum wage is higher than $15 an hour, and a Big Mac costs less. So who's making the vig on that? It's not you folks. You folks ought to uh, enjoy the benefit of a, a minimum wage uh, as well. So again, I want to applaud the uh, the Assembly Democratic leadership, and I'm proud to, to stand alongside them. Thank you. So many of you may know, for um, over a year, we've actually, oh, by the way, I didn't introduce myself. My name is Analilia Mejia. I'm the director of New Jersey Working Families. We are a progressive, nonpartisan organization that asks people and legislators to vote their values. And raising the minimum wage and raising up workers um, is most certainly um, one of our core values, and it's in the self-interest and best interest of everyone in New Jersey. Um, over a year ago, we started, um, or we organized ourselves with different partners and affiliates to to push to build towards this campaign this fight for 15 um, anchored in ongoing campaigns um, very close to us of workers who are really fighting the fight to try to get a little bit more economic stability for themselves one of these core fights is at the Newark Airport which should be an engine of, of economic stability and growth um, if they were actually paying, if every worker that worked in, in Newark Airport was making a, a family sustaining wage. And here to talk a little bit more about that is Kevin Brown, District Leader and Vice President of SEIU 32BJ. Good morning. Thank you, Analilia. Thank you to the Speaker Prieto. This is a wonderful opportunity to do something for uh, the almost million workers in New Jersey who are living on poverty wages. Uh, thank you to uh, Assemblyman Scheer, thank you to Assemblyman Wisniewski, thank you to Senator Lesniak uh, for all your leadership on this issue. We just completed a contract campaign that we were able to raise the lives of 7,000 janitors uh, in this state to $15 an hour. <laughs> However, for the other million workers, they haven't achieved that dream. You can't survive, as the previous speakers have stated, on $8.38 an hour. Just imagine trying to live on $17,000 a year. And if your spouse also works full time and is bringing home maybe another $17,000, imagine $34,000 a year. You can't do it in this state. You can't do it in this, t this state. Since the recession in 2008, things have gotten more difficult for working people, and people are trying to crawl themselves out of poverty, but you can't. And so we need to address fundamentally the issue. And the way to do that is to raise the minimum wage, because a rising tide will lift all boats. All working people will benefit when we raise the minimum to $15 an hour. Newark Airport where we now represent 2,000 workers who are, have gotten to a whopping $10.10 an hour are still struggling in poverty. There are 7,000 of those workers. And in fact, myself, Anna Lilia, and uh, another 10 working people from the airport were arrested on Martin Luther King Day to protest that fact. 
and we will continue to fight, to get arrested, to do whatever it is necessary to raise working people to a living wage so that we can sustain and eliminate the scourge of poverty in this state. When I think of airport workers like Benjamin Marte, who's working as a young man, going to Essex County Community College in Newark, working full-time at the airport, and living in a homeless shelter. Living, working full-time, and living in a homeless shelter. What's wrong with this picture? And that's the problem that we're going to fix. If we're going to do that. This legislation is the road to that, and we appreciate the leadership together with working families and all the partners and all the working people here to help ourselves raise ourselves, raise America, raise New Jersey. Thank you very much. You know, when, when Kevin invited me to participate in that, that act of civil disobedience, I was really worried about telling my mother. Um, and I didn't tell her until afterwards, after we were processed and released. And when I shared why, um, I shared that I had just been arrested and now I have this court date and, you know, I didn't want to tell you. She was like, why? And I was like, we're fighting to raise wages. We're fighting for, for people like you, Mommy. And she was like, that's the right thing to do. I'm so proud of you. So <laughs> thank you for that. Because when we fight, we win. We win. We win. All right, so I'm doing this in alphabetical order. I'm going to now call up the director of SEIU State Council, Lizette Delgado Polanco. Good morning, everyone. I am the executive director of SEIU New Jersey State Council, along with Kevin. We represent 40,000 members in the state of New Jersey. And most of our members across this great state are low wage workers. I want to thank the speaker and I want to thank the leadership standing here um, along for your leadership on this issue. This is so important. We've been fighting. Actually, this has been a buzz about a year, but the reality is that we've been fighting this fight over three years across the country um, on this fight for 15. Um, SEIU has, along with our partners, we all know um, as this said before all the speakers that the minimum wage doesn't even begin to cover what it takes to live in this great state. Our workers are one of the lowest uh, working uh, paid workers here. Kevin talked about Newark Airport and I also want to highlight that a lot of the legislators that are standing here stood out there in the freezing cold with us and we all marched for these workers and I want to thank you. Thank you Senator Leslie. Thank you to all of the legislators that came so important to give a voice to the voiceless workers of the airport. Um, I also want to talk about the other locals that we represent that also have low wage workers. Our 1199 SEIU local healthcare workers, that they are uh, working and taking care of the most vulnerable seniors and folks who can't take care of themselves. They have to take care of other folks, but they don't have enough money to take care of their own families. I want to talk about the workers represented by Workers United. They, have, they work in the warehouses filled with all this fashionable goods they can't even uh, begin to afford to own, living in poverty. We represent cafeteria workers, security, administrative support, custodians in Newark public schools. These are public employees, you all. Um, sanitation workers who intimately know poverty in ways that a lot of us in this room can't even begin to imagine. And the list goes on of many New Jersey workers that are forced to take multiple jobs, go on public assistance, and as Kevin said, even live in homeless shelters. We actually had that case in Newark with my sister here, Gail, a lady who was working in the, in the, in the schools serving the children in public school, public employee, living in a shelter with her disabled daughter. So this is the reality that we're fighting. This is the real face of this fight. And I want to thank you again for taking the leadership and finally for New Jersey catching up to a lot of the cities across the country who realize that this is the only way we can move ahead. Thank you. Now we work with multiple partners and again going in alphabetical order, I'm going to call up Chris Estevez, the newly minted president of Latino Action Network. Thank you, Anna Lilia. When my family arrived in the United States in the late 50s, uh, they came here uh, in pursuit of the American dream of those jobs that, that uh, provided families with a living wage, with a, with provided them with the opportunity to send their kids to college and so their kids could do better than they did. They came here to get in line for those jobs. And over the, over the pursuing decades, 
what they saw was that as they waited in line for those jobs, those jobs, those manufacturing jobs started to be sent away and they went away and were replaced with, instead of these, these good paying uh, manufacturing jobs with benefits, they were replaced with low, low, low level service work that did not pay very much at all. And that's what we have today. We have these, we have these really uh, honorable occupations that are being paid poverty wages. Uh, and, and so in today's, today you have Latinos are overrepresented in minimum wage jobs in health care, in, uh, in building services, um, in child care. And for, for the Latino Action Network, this is one of our most important issues, is helping uh, Latinos participate in this democracy, in this economy. And in order to do that, we need to raise the wage. We need a $15 minimum wage now. And we're here to thank the uh, legislators who have uh, sponsored this bill, Senator Lesniak, Speaker Prieto, Assemblyman Chair, and all the other legislators who are, are, um, are, are, are introducing this. We will be out in numbers to, to support this. Um, and I have to ask, are there any Latino uh, Spanish media in the house today? No? no? So I, I, oh, one, Puerto one Puerto Rican. Are you doing Spanish? Are you doing Spanish media? Because I'll say that all in Spanish if you are. Okay. Okay. So I'll save my Spanish comments for when we have Spanish media here next time. But I want to say that Latino Action Network is here. We support the 15 now, and we urge you to pat get it passed. Thank you very much. All right. Now I'm going to call up my sister in arms, who could speak about the the tragedy that we have child care workers, we have people caring for children who are unable to actually make ends meet and care for their own families. Hetty Rosenstein. Good morning, and uh, like my brothers and sisters who spoke before, I first really want to give tremendous honor to our amazing democratic leadership here that is taking on this critically important issue in our country and embracing our democratic values. Um, as uh, Anna Lilia said, CWA represents a whole host of workers who make w much, very far under $15 an hour. We represent thousands of child care workers um, who uh, make so little money that in fact they can't afford child care themselves. Uh, they are, these are some of the most important jobs in the state, early education jobs, early growth jobs for children, and they are making, in some cases, home child care workers may make as little as $5 an hour. Uh, and those in agencies are making nine, maybe nine fifty if they're fortunate. Um, way, way below uh, a living wage themselves. Not only are our child care workers making this little, but I think it should be known that almost all of the private nonprofits that provide group home services, provide um, residential services that the state of New Jersey relies upon, that the state, we are providing so little money in reimbursement to those programs that in fact the people who are caring for uh, developmentally disabled uh, adults, psychiatric uh, facilities, that there people are making nine, ten dollars an hour. The people who do that work and care very much for children for the developmentally disabled, for other people who are disabled and need their help, end up making choices about, can I do a little better if I go work for Walmart? So it isn't only the big box stores that are exploiting people. It isn't only warehouses. It isn't only service jobs. It's government itself. And I do want to recognize right now that CWA is bargaining for $15 an hour in cases. And I particularly want to recognize the city of East Orange. We just negotiated with Mayor Lester Taylor a $15 minimum wage. And we are going on to do that in all of our places 
not only in private sector, but also in public sector. We're looking to do this in our libraries, in f among our uh, crossing guards, among all of whom are public sector workers earning some of the lowest wages in this state. Again, thank you so much, uh, Speaker Prieto, uh, <coughs> Assemblyman Wisniewski, Assemblyman Scher, and Senator Lesniak. This is really a tremendous step forward. Absolutely. All right, now I want to bring up the president of New Jersey Education Association, Wendell, uh, Wendell Steinhauer, who could speak more about the impact that having to piece together many jobs to make ends meet can actually have on our children. Thank you. President of NJEA representing 200,000 school, public school employees. Uh, this is absolutely an education issue. Uh, Assemblyman Scher touched on a couple points what I, which I want to emphasize. Poverty is strongly correlated to educational challenges. When children don't have reliable food and shelter, their education suffers. When parents have to work multiple jobs to make ends meet, they have less time to support their children's education. As the NJEA, we are advocates. And Advocacy for public education requires advocacy for our students and our families. And this is a social justice issue. New Jersey is one of the wealthiest states in America. But New Jersey's income inequality is growing. We have to reverse that trend to secure the future for New Jersey's working class and middle class families. And the best way to do that is to raise the floor so that people who work hard can achieve the dignity that their hard work deserves. I know we will hear from representatives of New Jersey's wealthy citizens that this is going to be bad for the economy. But I'll guarantee you this. Not one of those people will volunteer to live on the minimum wage that they will claim is enough for other people to live on. Because the truth is, they couldn't do it and neither could anyone else. It's time to end the double standard that makes heroes out of these so-called job creators. But they turn a blind eye when those jobs leave people in poverty. People need jobs, but they also need justice. So don't let anyone tell you we can have both. We have the chance to prove that in New Jersey. We stand with all working people, and we're proud to stand for this smart policy that will benefit our students, their families, and New Jersey's income. I love that. People need jobs, but they also need justice. That's, that's for sure. I now I want to call, I was whispering to, into Gordon's ear, like, you're going to break down how this is actually very good for the economy, right? No, <laughs> So I now, I now want to call Gordon McGinnis, uh, the director of New Jersey Policy Perspective. Thank you. Let me, uh, let me join those commending the leadership in the assembly and Senator Lesniak for taking this step. It, ca it cast a spotlight on New Jersey's dire financial and economic condition. The fact is that our middle class is shrinking. The working class is squeezed tight, and the poor are destitute. Destitute. So we're talking about a minimum wage at $8.38 an hour that doesn't come close to allowing a full-time worker to have a chance in New Jersey. You can't, and you've heard about the rental costs. You've heard about all the things that add up to a bill that's too high to be met with such low wages. And I want to... I want to put some perspective on the fact. We have heard a lot recently from our governor in the form of vetoes. We've heard about it for five years, about the fact that the New Jersey can no longer afford to provide health care to working women in the form of uh, support for Planned Parenthood. We can't afford to deal with uh, lead poisoning um, in our kids. Flint, Michigan, on, in the headlines, we've got 12 towns in New Jersey with higher levels of lead poisoning than Flint, Michigan. And yet we can't put a dime into dealing with that issue. 
So we are a state that is way behind on lots of things. Our transportation trust fund is going bust. Chairman Wisniewski mentioned that there's another problem with the current status, and that is we do not allow people to live in such destitution. So we have, over the years, said the taxpayers will, will step in to subsidize, to subsidize employers who are perfectly happy to provide low wages. And so in the state of New Jersey, where our transportation trust fund is bust, and where we cannot afford to meet the formula for school aid and lots of things, we're way behind. Our credit rating is in the basement, thank God for Illinois. <laughs> but this year's budget, it'll be hidden. We are going to put forward almost a billion dollars in that budget for taxpayer subsidies to low-wage employers. And that includes the uh, earned income tax credit. So when you think about it, what we've done is to say that we will take care, not at a great level, not at a level where anybody can t put away money for a vacation or for college tuition, at a level where people barely hang on, the taxpayers will step in and subsidize what is handled routinely by the rest of New Jersey's employers. So it's time to put an end to that. Thank you very much. All right, again, going in alphabetical order, I'm going to call up Brian Powers from 15 Now. Thank you, everybody. So uh, 15 Now started uh, about two years ago here in New Jersey, and uh, we were the first organization to call for a $15 an hour minimum wage. We were started by a worker from Barnes & Noble, a couple of students, one of whom is still in high school, as a matter of fact. Um, and a couple of unemployed organizers. Uh, along the way, we got a small coalition began to take shape, and we're really proud to be a part of the Fight for 15 coalition, being led by working families. I'm going to try and name some of the groups. I, we see some of them here today. I may miss a few, so yell at me if I forget one of these. But we have New Labor, uh, the Progressive Democrats of America, Socialist Alternative, Socialist Party New Jersey, the NAAC Newark branch, uh, New Jersey United Students, Food and Water Watch, the National Organization of Women, the Communications Workers of America, <laughs> um, the New Jersey New York Metro Postal Union, and the Democratic Socialists of America are just a few. Did I forget anybody? SEIU, SEIU, all over the place. There you go. You guys are here, though. So you guys are here. Latino Action Network. All right. So, like I said, I, I forget a few. So it's really kind of amazing, you know, seeing over the last two years how this cause has got to this point. It's a real honor to be here today. Um, so. Um, we want to thank, of course, Senator Wisniewski, Speaker Prieto, for your efforts well, here, and <laughs> I was going to get to you. Let me finish my sentence. And Senator Lesniak for introducing this legislation. Um, we have a saying at 15 now, it's on the back of my shirt. It says that the rent won't wait. And we live in a state, as was spoken, one of the highest costs of living in the country. Um, one of the great things about this legislation, it is the first legislation introduced to demand a $15 an hour minimum wage immediately with no long phase in period. Because we need $15 an hour, and when do we need it? Now. What do we want? $15. Come on, we're on TV. What do we want? $15. When do we want it? Now. Ah. Very good. <laughs> so, thanks again to working families. If you get a chance, if you want to join our cause, you can go to www.15nownj.org. Sign the petition, get involved. Uh, it takes a lot of grassroots activism, and we like to think that working class people are the ones that are going to make this happen for real in the state of New Jersey. Thanks. All right, last but not least, I am calling up um, another sister in arms who knows full well the plight of the working poor and um, the power of collective action and Bardman. Hi everyone, my name's Ann Vardaman. I'm the program director at New Jersey Citizen Action, and I am absolutely honored today to stand with everyone here and so grateful to the assembly leadership and to Senator Lesniak for, for introducing this incredibly important bill. 
Um, we all know that New Jersey is an incredibly expensive state to live in. And for the past six years, what we've seen under the Christie administration is that life has gotten a lot easier for millionaires and billionaires. And it's gotten a lot easier for giant corporations who are often the most, the wealthiest and most politically connected corporations that are able to get massive tax subsidies that the rest of us are footing the bill for. But life is getting incredibly harder for people who live on the edges, for people who live, who make less than $15 an hour, for people who make minimum wage. And that is often women, women with children. It's often minorities. It's often people who have disabilities, who are immigrants, who don't have powerful people and powerful lobbyists uh, talking to the administration and making sure that they're getting what's theirs. Well, today, we've taken the first step in making sure that the working people of New Jersey get a raise, that the people of New Jersey get a raise, that there's someone looking out for the people and we, not just the corporations and not just the wealthiest. In New Jersey, if what we're saying today is that if you work 40 hours a week, if you work full time, you should not live in poverty. That's what our politicians are saying today. That's what all of these organizations are here saying today, representing hundreds of thousands of working New Jerseyans. Let's give New Jersey a raise. Thank you. I have to say, Anne and I actually belong to a, a mommy group where recently, during Christmas, we pulled together resources to help some of our fellow mothers afford Christmas presents and to make ends meet because they couldn't. Because families in New Jersey and families across this country are living in poverty despite their best efforts. And so again, we laud all of the leadership um, that uh, is taking a bold step in New Jersey, a bold step across this country. Our speaker, Vincent Prieto, Assemblyman Wisniewski, Assemblyman Gary Scher, and of course, Senator Ray Lesniak. We thank you so much for your efforts, and we thank the collective efforts of advocates and workers across the state who are going to bring change. One way or another, we're going to work together to raise up working families. Thank you very much.